Hey everybody, welcome to Q&A with A and V. I'm Vincent Racaniello. And right next to me here in the incubator is Amy Rosenfeld. Welcome, Amy. Hi, Vincent. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? It's good. What do you think of the incubator? Well, I spent a lot of time hanging sound panels, so it's good. It's very it's nice. It's all good, right? Yeah. Furniture's comfortable. I like the chairs. Excellent. It's all good. Well, so I, I uh, had to spend much of today in the city, and I'm spending tonight here because I had an early uh, lecture this morning, and I, I took a hotel room for two nights. So I am... Uh, I thought, Amy, come and let's do it together. And uh, this way, yes, Amy will not be leaving to do her plaques, right? Yep. No plaque assays. No Eliza's tonight. I'll be behind, but it's fine. It's all good. Uh, so let's take some uh, questions. We yeah. got actually a lot of the ones that were there, maybe because we started early, they're there. So here's from, oh, this is our friend Colopy, who's in school. I heard the flu season is going to be really bad this year because we skipped last year's. Is this true? How can we prepare? I think, Amy, that's a speculation that it's going to be bad, right? Yes, it's a speculation. But I think there's some data that says from South America that they had a larger flu season than previous years. There's more immunologically naive people. Yeah. So I, I think it's a possibility. How can you prepare? Get vaccinated. Yeah, for that, sure. That's it, right? For sure. There is, go to your local store. They'll vaccinate you. If you're here in the city, they do it for free now. Is that right? Yep. Uh, in today's Wall Street Journal, any thoughts on that antidepressant that might help COVID outcomes? Fluvoxamine. Thoughts, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a serotonin inhibitor, right? It's SSRI, SSRI yeah. yeah. Not really sure what it does, but yeah, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I think most people don't understand. I mean, the study that was done suggests that this drug uh, makes it less likely that you're going to be hospitalized. So that's interesting. Yeah, but mechanistically, I don't think it's clear. Has Daniel talked about that yet? I don't think so. Maybe he will tomorrow. Maybe. Well, you know, you're doing a whole Q&A so they can ask him. That's right. Don't forget tomorrow. Live Q&A with Daniel and Vincent. Yeah. Mostly Daniel. He'll answer the questions here. He'll be sitting in Amy's chair. Yes. But he will take, I will bring up the questions and he'll answer them. That should be fun. Yeah. That'll be good. Could a simultaneous flu and COVID booster <laughs> result in more side effects? not what they're saying and they tell you that they can do it and the guy at Moderna the CEO he he talked about it earlier this week he's going to make a vaccine that does all respiratory viruses really yeah not clear how that's going to work out but yeah is this going to be a mixture of mRNAs against different viruses I would assume so he's from Moderna hmm. But the thing is, is that if it's too polyvalent, you don't get a large immune response. That's why trivalent OPV is not as good as yeah. monovalent. That's right. They interfere, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, they're saying you can do it, so uh, go for it. By the way, mods, thank you. Frank, Vanity, Les, Mr. Ozzy, Cam, Steph just left to do an urban hike. Wow. So enjoy. But thank you all. And yes, Amy doesn't leave to go do plaques. She finished it earlier today. Yes. So if you guys want to be rough, uh, you could tell her, why don't you do that every Wednesday night so you could stay with us? I'd have to come down every Wednesday. Why? I would force you to finish? Yeah, but I'm not going to do this uh, that yeah, often yeah, here, yeah, right? Well, yeah, because otherwise I would just go back and do plaques. I have yeah. other stuff to do. I have Eliza's to set up and stuff. Um. If your children, Amy, and you, me too, I guess, were small, 10 years old, would you vaccinate them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely do that. And I'm glad you like us here. Uh, I'm sorry about the, <laughs> the chip in the wall. Everybody seems to notice it. We'll fix it one of these days. Uh, any new interviews? Yes, I did. Well, as you know, Jillian Michaels published first of all. And then I did E. 
for explicit podcast this week. It was an hour and a half. It was a, it was a nice guy. He was a Corey something, interesting guy. Just get this. He started a YouTube channel a month ago, and he has a million subs. Well, he probably doesn't talk just only about viruses. No, no. He, in fact, he rarely talks about viruses. Okay, well, that's probably it. Uh, okay, thank you. You like the Jillian Michaels. Very good. I mean, they, it's audio only, but they had recorded video, so I presume they're going to release a video uh, at one point. And Pete says, I haven't filled the hole. Well, it just needs to be painted, so I have to get the paint that matches, right? Yeah, but we're not going to Home Depot until the hexagons come. Amy. I'm only making one trip to Home Depot. You know that place scares me. How do we know how West Vile... West Nile. <laughs> West Nile neuro is neuroinvasive. Why is it in some patients and not others? Go for it, Amy. Well, tropism is dictated by host, right? And they could have a polymorphism and stuff. But I believe Tyler and Ian have both looked at the neuroinvasiveness and that astrocyte infection of West Nile. Yeah. It goes right up. Yeah, but I think there are host components, right? For sure. That's so, why some patients get it and some patients don't. Yeah, yeah. You have to do like genomics on the patients who have it and compare them to the patients who don't, and we haven't done that. Because it's not such a pressing disease anymore, right? There yeah. was a big spark outbreak in the late 90s, and then it just became endemic. Yeah. There's not so many cases. Is there a mechanistic reason that J&J &J vaccine might make a stronger or longer T-cell response as a third shot than the mRNA vaccines? Maybe it's the ad vector. Yeah, many people feel that the ad vectors give good T-cell responses because that's what adenovirus does. So it could be. But, um, you know, if you've already had J&J, &J, you can get a second or you could switch to an mRNA. Right? Do you, do you buy that, Amy? Do you approve of that? Yeah, I don't think it makes a difference. Is it better for ages 5 to 12 to get vaccine or contract COVID naturally? Get vaccinated. Why it's shouldn't ridiculous. they? Why shouldn't they just? Uh, you wanted to risk your child getting sick and yeah. dying, going yes. into the hospital. Yeah. So Sarah, you're, you're going to throw that roulette. Can I get a gun? Put a bullet in one of the holes, swing the thingy around, and then see where it stops. Pull the trigger, and if your brains blow out, well, so be it. Yeah, Sarah, you don't want to take a chance, even though serious disease is more rare in younger kids it's not zero as daniel griffin says and i wouldn't take that chance with my kids frankly science knowledge changes what about boosters now and antibody levels as correlates of immunity we still do not know the correlates of immunity because one reason we don't have a standardized neutralization assay nope so that's not happening so we don't know anything new about the effects of boosters, unfortunately. I agree with you, though. Science knowledge changes, and when it does, we usually adapt to it. But currently, there's nothing more on boosters. Yes, fluvoxavine uh, has been used for a while, yes. But the point is, this was a very large study, the largest done so far, and it looked promising. And that's why uh, people are getting excited about it. Amy, you look nice. Thank you. And royal blue is your color. You like this blue? Yeah, but I can't wear the same blue every night, so um, we'll have to mix it up. What are the possibilities that vaccine-based immunity would clear an infection before immunity to the nucleocapsid proteins can be developed? I would say zero because in order for the virus to reproduce, it has to make nucleocapsid protein. So I don't see you getting uh, any immunity without that. Do you, Amy? No. I don't know that that's the right interpretation of the question, though. What do you think it is? I think he wants to know, would you get a... Oh, so I would see. you get an antibody response to the... If you did it at the same time or within the same window... If you gave somebody an the vaccine and virus, would you get an antibody response first, or would you get the nucleocapsid protein to be produced first? And I think the nucleocapsid protein would be produced first before you got that's a right, that's right. vaccine immunity. Um, 
So I think you would have antibodies to, you could find antibodies to nucleocapsid. What, what would you think if, say, you were infected shortly after being vaccinated when you have very high antibody levels and that would possibly impede infection? Well, it, it will define infection. Is infection exposure or is infection replicating virus? Replicating virus. virus. So if, yeah, I mean, you would you would have less, right? You would have much fewer antibodies against nucleocapsid, but yeah. probably not null. No. Not zero, huh? Right. <laughs> Could you explain why a booster isn't necessary, but a second dose is? Actually, I just like the thing. Don't worry, be happy. The name is nice, yes. Amy, can we adopt that philosophy? Don't worry, be happy. Sure, if my 39 becomes a scorable. Amy scorable. wants to get grants, and then she'll be happy. <laughs> if I if my grant is, yeah. Uh, can you explain why a booster is not necessary in the second dose is? Well, I'm not clear that a booster in the second dose, if the second dose was given in the right time frame, is not a booster. Hmm. But since it wasn't given in the right time frame, it's very hard to know whether or not you really needed that second dose, right? Because it's like 21 days, so it's just as you're starting. So, you know, originally the boosters were justified by saying antibody levels are waning. But now the narrative is, well, we put the first and second doses too close together, so we need a third dose spaced properly apart to get the correct immune response. That's because they didn't like the ans that answer when I said it in January. And neither did you or Brianne or a variety of other people. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So maybe the moral of the story is you should listen to the non-immunologist who's just a winging it. Look, here's the story. Um, it's true. I just wing it. I think a booster isn't necessary because the vaccines are still preventing over 90 percent of severe disease and death, including by Delta variant. So if Why that changes. Why did you qualify it? What do you mean qualify it? Like point out, including the Delta well, variant. Because people are afraid of Delta, it seems. So I want to point out that even that is handled by the vaccines. Now, what's the point of getting a booster if is it going to protect against even mild infections, maybe for six or eight months. But then what? Are you going to get another booster? That's not a good public health strategy. That's the way I'm thinking. Well, what did we just discuss this afternoon? What's the point of the whole program, right? To Which, prevent disease. Right. Serious disease and death. Right. Amy, what does the polio vaccine prevent? It prevents paralysis. Exactly. It doesn't prevent infection. And actually, when I told my family that, they were flabbergasted, and except my father. He knew that. Good. But he's a biochemist. Yeah, he's a scientist. Exactly. But yeah. What is the function of the ER Terasaki spiral for viral replication? Does RNA wind through? Do you know what that is? I'm not sure. No, I've never heard that. I've phrase. never heard of a Terasaki spiral, but... The virus does induce the formation of membranes in the cell, vesicular structures on which the RNA reproduces. It goes on the surface, right, Amy? Some of them, but for coronas, it goes inside the double membrane vessel. Oh, inside. Okay. Coronas yeah. go in. Yeah. yeah, many other viruses do as well. That's correct. But coronas replicate on, so on top of it's an anchor. <laughs> All right. Michael doesn't like the wall. Can you green screen it? So I'll try. And I'll put a picture of the nice office wall. But, you know, the other thing is this is a, an incubator that we're working on, and I haven't got everything in place yet. So give me some time. I've only been here a month. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't understand, like, what the obsession is. They like nice backgrounds. That's what most people have on in, in streams and Yeah, Zooms. I know. And then, and then we have a 45-minute discussion about whether or not certain people in California are next to the beach, even though the city that they're <laughs> they live in is like nowhere near the beach like mm. it, that's not the important point i agree i think the content is important but anyway aside from covid do we have different manufacturers technologies of all the other common vaccines that exist yeah yeah for sure so we have for polio we have two different kinds of vaccines 
made by different manufacturers all over the world because no one supplier does everything. Same with measles. We have two different kinds. Uh, what about flu? Absolutely. Many different kinds of flu vaccines, many different manufacturers. And why is this? Well, for something like a flu vaccine where there's a big market, a lot of companies want a piece of it. And so they develop... Well, they don't have all the manufacturing capacity to supply the whole world. That, that's the other thing, yes. No that's one the company major can do that. Yeah, no. and that's the major reason is yeah. that there is not enough manufacturing capacity in one for one company to supply the whole world. Uh, Rima had both vaccines together and no side effects. So, so Pete says 98-year-old had a jab in each arm without much effect. Very good. Great. Uh, ditching loves your sweater and cute ponytail side bangs. Yeah. Right okay. It's good with the bald spot. Thoughts on N-acetylcysteine for COVID? Any data? Not clear that there is. N-acetylcysteine. But that's like acetaminophen or something. Is a medication that is used to treat paracetamol overdose. It loosens thick mucus. Huh. So maybe if you have COVID and you're making a lot of mucus that this could help, right? It's not clear that you're making that much mucus and it's hard. It's not clear that, yeah, it's not clear. Hmm. And it's not clear that your cilia can't move the mucus away. Like for asthma, where it's clear. Anyway, there you go. That's what we think about acetylcysteine. What does the current study say about the effects of the vaccine on males under 12? I, th I heard it caused heart issues. So there is uh, clearly myocarditis at a very low frequency after vaccination of older individuals, not 12 and under. I don't think we have any data yet on that. But, you know, 20s, 30-somethings, 40 something. This uh, a small faction developed myocarditis, which was treatable and transient. COVID will also, it can also be associated with myocarditis, but at a higher frequency. And so the decision is that it is much lower risk to get the vaccine in terms of myocarditis, and it's treatable. So I don't think it's an issue. But under 12, we don't have data yet. I don't think, I think that we do. We do? I think it was included in the FDA discussion, and they decided that the side effects were minimal compared to no regular. So, yeah, I believe it was included when, and discussed when they were discussing whether or not to approve the Pfizer vaccine earlier this week. And they concluded it was not significant. So the vac by the way, COVID itself in the absence of vaccination, 36 times higher myocarditis risk in children with COVID compared to without. So there is always myocarditis in the population. And well, yeah, because there's genetic myocarditis. And if you get the COVID, 37 times higher risk of, of myocarditis in children under 16 years of age. All right, the COVID vaccine. Um, let's see. That's, no, I think you have to go and look at the FDA discussion earlier this Ooh, week. Ooh, look at Yvonne Maldonado. I know her. Uh, but, okay, I, I take your word that it yeah, is. Yeah, it was uh, included in the discussion. That's why they ex asked them to expand the trials in the summer. All right. I still don't get the elementary school children vaccination mandates. Case numbers don't mean anything if symptoms are minimal and vulnerable population is 90% vaxxed, right? So this is, this is really short-sighted and quite myopic. So it's only about your child. It's not about, you know, if somebody's child lives with grandma and they get sick and they bring it home to grandma who couldn't be vaccinated or is immune compromised. It's not about the child who was immune compromised in the class, and it's not about the parent who could have been immune compromised or the teacher who could have been immune compromised, even if they're vaccinated, right? Yep. Okay. This is a good plan. I like this. We should all just care about ourselves. Good. Works for me. So, yes, the October 26th FDA um, update does talk about myocarditis um, in children under 12. That's right. And the conclusion one it was was it was less of a risk than getting uh, COVID, but I, I don't have the numbers here to show you. Shocking, that I might be right. 
Amy is implacable. Do we have any data on how long it takes for the antibody and cellular response to kick in after a third mRNA vaccine dose? What do you mean kick in? You're boosting it. It's already been there. A couple it's of days, right? just making it higher. Yeah, it takes like 7 to 14 days. Yeah. 7 to 14 days. People are saying hi to you. Do you like that? It's cute. It's very nice. Uh, Amy, how technical is counting plaque assays? You can discuss that with with Michaela and Edmund. It's very technical. We have a video that we made yes, we did. of uh, Amy doing plaque assays um, in the lab. You know, it's called Counting Plaques. It's on my YouTube channel. Go find it. And you can see Amy uh, doing all the things in a plaque assay. It's very cool. Yep. Have we ever seen a serious side effect from a vaccine many years later? If the answer is no, I guess anti-vaxxers will argue, but mRNA vaccines have, haven't been around many years. Oy vey. <laughs> well, so I had this discussion recently with someone. And so I wanted to know what many years was, right? And they're like, you know, 20, 30. Well, that would mean my parents would never have vaccinated us, and you would never have vaccinated your kids against polio because we've only been vaccinating for less than 70 years, right? Yeah. And so, as you can see, since the world population has grown tremendously in those 70 years, it's very sterilizing. Um, and we're all three-headed animals now, right? Uh, clearly. And, uh, no, there are no long-term <laughs> issues. Paul Offit said on TWIV, nothing after a few months. After six weeks. Six weeks. We don't months. see anything. The, the two-year study of phase three is simply to get information on the durability of vaccination, not side effects. So uh, the mRNA vaccines have now been tested for over a year. Not going to see any long-term side effects. But I agree. You, if they think there are going to be some, you can't argue with that. right? So uh, No, it's a circular argument. The, get, a, get an adenovirus vector then. The Terasaki spiral ramps in the rough ER, do they put through viral RNA? I don't believe so, right? No, the rough ER is just ribosomes that are coding the ER so that you yeah. can translocate proteins as they get tra trans as they get produced. It's not viral RNA. It's yeah. the translocation of proteins as they are produced. I got my booster and my arm was bleeding afterwards. I've never had this with a flu or COVID shot. Does this mean I got vaccine in my bloodstream? Probably not. They might have poked a vessel, a small vessel, and it bled. But if it's tiny, it's very hard to get that needle into it, even accidentally. So I think you should don't worry. Be happy. I mean, I'm serious, actually, even though your, your handle is that. Thank you, Dan, for your contribution. I'm fully vaccinated and boosted. If I encounter the virus, will my immune system still produce nucleocapsid antibodies even though I am vaxxed? Yes, if you get infected. Well, if he says if he encounters it. Well, I don't know what that means. I mean, it could the, be the, exposure, right? Most of the time, they're just asking whether or not you've been exposed. It's a single time point. If you have antibodies to nucleocapsid, it's likely that the virus has reproduced to some extent in you. Would you agree well, with that? Well, it's made protein. It's made I'm protein. Not saying it's made infectious particles. I will say it's made protein. Okay. So, because you can make proteins yes. without making infectious particles, you could make antibodies to nucleocapsid. If so, why all the fuss about natural versus vaccine induced immunity? What's all the fuss, Amy? I don't know. I didn't have any fuss. I didn't come up with this idea that vaccination was better than natural immunity and all this other Yahoo stuff. Do you think it's the same? I think actually, natural immune, uh, unfortunately, infection immunity due to infection is probably better. You know it, because you're infected by a quasi-species or swarm of viruses. This is a clonal vaccine against one protein. You know, it did its job. It allowed us to control the pan It allowed us to get into a position where we can control the pandemic. That's what its job was. Well, it wasn't anything else. Before, when I said, what's all this fuss, it felt like I was in Saturday Night Live, right? When G Gilda Radner used to say, what's all this about? Euthanasia. Yes. Remember? No, not really. Oh, you didn't watch it. 
but sitting next to you, it's like, a, it's like we're a news. I know, but team. but to be honest, I was like two. Okay, well, I was older. Yeah. Uh, Mary wants to know, Vincent, you seem pretty senior. Yeah, I'm 68 years old, and I've been in the lab well at Columbia for 40 years. Why don't your techs inject mice? Same for Amy. Do you enjoy hands-on work? I'm the. I have 40 years of mouse experience, so I'm the go-to guy, and no, nobody else really can do it. Um, you well, would have we to don't be, have any money. And we don't have Amy. technicians. Amy has one technician, and she doesn't do mice. Oh. I don't mind actually doing it at all. I enjoy it, um, and that's my contribution. I changed the CO2 tanks. I changed the nitrogen tanks. Which yeah. we have to change. Which? The nitrogen. Friday, yeah. I'll be there Friday. Right. Is that Absolutely. okay? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Could you comment on how the cellular receptor neuropillin 1, known to bind furin cleave substrates, significantly potentiates SARS CoV 2 infectivity? You guys did this paper on TWIV. There is no mechanism, it's just an observation. But how might it? Could block it. I really don't know because what cells did they do this in? Do you remember? Uh, like Calo 3s. Okay, so there is temperus on the plasma membrane, right? Yeah, but it's blocking it, known to bind the furin cleavage site. You can imagine that when it binds the it, when it binds to the pro, when it binds to spike, it blocks the cleavage site. So it doesn't enhance. Potentiate does not mean enhance. Potentiates infectivity means enhance. Yeah, I don't know. No, the mechanism isn't known. School email. It's a good question. I got reversed. I don't know. No, no. I, I agree that it's an it's observation. We did discuss it on TWIV, and the numbers looked okay, but the mechanism is unknown. Neuropillin, it's a cell surface protein. It could, help, it could bind and help internalize. It could tether it. It could tether it. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are a number of mechanisms, but it hasn't been sorted out. That needs to be done. I agree. Question for both waiting for Novavax. Any news? Well, you guys discussed the phase three trial on TWIF a couple of weeks phase ago. Phase three trial is in preprint. They are going to discuss their EUA application, I believe, in November. Is that the, the timing? Do you remember? I don't remember. Nova, I think Daniel uh, talked about that. Could be. Novavax seeks authorization in the UK. So in the UK, it submitted it. Uh, what about the U.S.? Uh, don't know offhand, but if Daniel Griffin says by the end of the year it should have an EUA, and there's not much left to this year, is there, Amy? <laughs> no, there's not. This is the time when you guys discussed last year that we would have rapid antigen tests, remember, and for under a dollar, and my response was, really, in six weeks? Six weeks from now? Really? You know, Amy, I was being <laughs> optimistic. I was being positive. Because <laughs> I'm still waiting. I was being positive. So, uh, so who's? I think she spelled my name wrong. That's fine. He wants to. Remo <laughs> wants to know what are the host components. We were talking about West Nile. They're not West, known yet. We don't know. There's, it's just a speculation, and uh, it has to be sort of discovered. But nobody's working on it, as far as we know. No. Hey, look, we're intergalactic treasures. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Yeah, and he corrected it, Amy. Yes, we knew that. Uh, Coralie, you thought the spec was your dirty screen. I can't tell you how many people have told me that today. They kept rubbing their screen. I will fix it. But, you know, it's I'm not, not going to Home Depot until the thingies come. I'm going to hang the, the picture on top of it. How's that? Uh, any inactivated vaccines working on approval? No. The inactivated vaccines, I'm not even sure they're making them in the U.S. Do you know, Amy? No. You could go to the Milken organization and, and look at the vaccine tracker and find out. But if they are, they're not close. And, you know, now it's getting very hard to do a clinical trial of a new vaccine because you cannot have a control group anymore. Why? Because once you have a treatment or a preventative for a disease, you can't withhold it from people. It's called withholding standard of care so you can't have a control that's not vaccinated so it becomes very hard to get new vaccines tested 
That's why getting on that horse early was really important. Just got an appointment for third shot. Question, if two times Moderna killed numerous long COVID symptoms, but not all, should I request Pfizer for the 3X boost? I frankly don't think it will make any difference, and I don't think Amy does either. Do you? No. I think you should go with either one, whatever you can get. Uh, let's see. Several people now recommend Twiv when commenting on COVID or vaccine articles on CBC website. That's lovely. I'm glad to hear it. Is that the Canadian Broadcasting Company? I suppose. Canadian Broadcasting Company, right? What do you think of health insurance companies denying coverage to unvaccinated people? Oof. What do you How think? How is that any different than when they deny coverage to people who have uh, whatever conditions? So, th of course, the concern is that they're going to get sick and incur huge hospital costs that yeah. then the vaccine company will pay for, right? No, that the insurance company. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the but insurance company. But it's the same company, thing yes. as when you sign up for insurance and you have a condition, a precondition, pre-signed up condition. Yeah. Like you can't easily get insurance if you, you know, have heart failure, or you know, the beginning of an aortic aneurysm or something. Right? There's a special term for this. It's like the pre. Yeah, I understand, but if you're not vaccinated, you're not sick yet. Well, right. I you can do it for people who just have like the Huntington's allele and they're not sick yet, but they have a probability of getting it. Yeah, I find it's all sleazy, frankly. I it think, is all uh, sleazy. I don't think it's a good thing. It uh, is all sleazy. I'm just saying it's really no different than when they do yeah. it for other diseases. I mean, you know, the insurance companies are not there to help you. They're there to make money. Right? That's the problem. Well, everybody's there to make money. I'm not here to make money. Are yes, you? you are. Of course you are. You need money to run the incubator. So you're here to make money. No, I'm not here. It happens to be that people donate because they like it, but I'm not here for that. Then give it all back. Okay, I will. Okay. But then they will take away their happiness at supporting us. How about if I give it to you? No, I don't want it. <laughs> but... um it's, but that's what people. That's what insurance companies do. That's why, like, when I used to freely donate blood to this cancer cent survey for prostate cancer, I was the control. The guy's wife would say to him, "You should go tell Amy to stop doing this because the insurance company isn't going to to insure her if they find out she has some kind of condition." It's like that's the most. So, look, a couple of comments that haven't shown up here yet saying you can't deny coverage based on pre-existing conditions. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, pre-existing. HCA made denying coverage illegal. So, um, I don't know. You can't do it for not getting vaccinated then. It seems to me that that's Right, it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, what, but I don't know if the ACA is only the insurance companies that participate in the Affordable Care Act or if it's all insurance companies, because not all insurance companies are part of the Affordable yes, Care Act. Yes, of course. Act. I'm sure they have no jurisdiction over non-members, right? Right. All right. What can I tell people that are high in trait disagreeableness that think either the virus isn't real or that the government is trying to control by population? Peoplation. I, I don't know what that is. Guess killing of people who are unwanted. Well, the virus isn't real. What is what has caused seven hundred thousand deaths in the U.S. and over and millions globally? Well, well uh, didn't you know we all blo we all boarded the BOS rocket and went to space with William Shatner last week or two weeks ago? And what does that have to do with it? Well, that's where the people went. I see. We just dropped them off in space. Didn't well, you, you can't know? fit that many people in space. How but, do you know uh, it's open ended? It's like a black hole. No, in the rocket. <laughs> so you tell them that many people have died, many people have become ill. How could that be that the virus isn't real? Well, it's, it's very rare. Else. I can show you pictures of it. I can show you the genome sequence. I could show you a corpse of someone who's died of it. The government is trying to control. It's very hard because there are people who believe in these theories, right? And uh, I don't know what to say to them. I can deal with the virus part. 
But this has nothing to do with the government. The government is trying to, at least the U.S. government and many others are trying to vaccinate you. So how are they trying to control de by depopulation? That doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Are there antibodies inside of B cells? And what happens if virus replicates inside the B cell? <laughs> the B cell produces antibodies. Yes, so the B cells make antibodies. So they yes, there, them. there are antibodies in vesicles in B cells that get transported to the plasma membrane and released, yeah. So they're in ves vesicles, so they wouldn't have access to the virus. They're not floating around in the cytoplasm. But, um, you know, Epstein-Barr virus infects B cells, right? Yes. So um, it actually makes them differentiate into memory cells. It doesn't affect uh, the replicate. The antibodies don't r affect the replication of the virus. So I just don't think they can access virus. Uh, why don't we have a standardized neutralization assay for coronavirus? By the way, Amy, you see now the the super stickers. This is what you can actually see. I see. Whereas on the one. other chat, yeah, you don't yeah, see I it. Don't they just give that. you a description of it. Isn't that cute? This is cute. This was number one, one fan. fan. How cute. Uh, why don't we have a standardized neutralization assay? Here's my view. Because cowboys are present. A cowboy is someone who sees a new disease outbreak and immediately starts their lab working on it and does it all on their own and doesn't interact with anyone else. And so they make their own assays, and then another lab does the same thing. So you have people doing pseudovirus assays. You have people doing authentic virus assays. They're doing them differently. There's no uh, coordination because everyone's in it for themselves. So that's why. Would you agree with that to some degree, kind yeah. of uh, down yeah. take? Yeah. Mm. We still don't have good numbers on vaccine adverse event rates versus severe disease in kids, not to mention no one worries this much about flu for kids. So, Dylan, That's actually not true. It's not true. Not true so he's real. Yeah, that's not true at all. So actually the FDA report has all the numbers for severe versus rate in children, and actually there have been papers published on it. And... Many people worry about this for flu. Um, you just don't pay attention. You just automatically assume that flu. You accept whatever flu does. It's like, are you really that concerned that 100,000 Americans die every year of flu, Dylan? <clears throat> Did you even know that before I spewed it out? It's kind of offensive. Okay, Brian says, I'm on Cosentix for psoriasis. Does this make me more vulnerable to infection? I just got a boost on my doctor's recommendation. Is this an immunosuppressive drug, uh, Amy? I would assume so. Yeah, so. So this is what you see when they give you a thumbs down. They see these floating thumbs down. How come there's no floating thumbs up? <laughs> that is a good question. That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I don't like this program. So this is a monoclonal that binds to IL-17A. That is, a, it's like rheumatoid arthritis or something. Um, psoriasis, um, arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis. Yeah, but I don't know what the role of IL-27 IL or IL-17 is in COVID, in resolving COVID infection. Well, you know, this is a cytokine produced by TH cells, regulatory T cells. So I suspect that it is um, it's, it's enabling better regulation of uh, T cells be. responses. So, uh, yeah, it's an immunosuppressant. So probably that's why your doctor said that. Could be. And Amy, it's true. I don't know why the thumbs up don't get an animation, but the thumbs down do. Isn't that funny? Isn't yeah, that funny? but I don't get it. It's really funny. Um, I don't get it. Is an individual still protected from memory even if measles titers are undetectable 40 years later? So are you asking if you're still protected against measles even though you can't detect measles antibodies? And I would say yes because the assay may not be sensitive enough. You may still have memory B cells. That's the key. You want to know if you have memory B cells. And it's my understanding that in measles – these can last for at least 40 years. 
And I don't think serum antibody is the final word on that. No, I don't think so. Are there super masks able to better filter better and be easier to breathe? I'm not aware of any super masks. I don't know, masks. but Daniel has gone through which masks he likes and which masks he doesn't like, and he's told you with the criteria that he's used. Yeah, so I mean, listen to Daniel. Yeah, Daniel has an episode on masks. They're not super, but, you know, the N95s are really good. That's what he would wear. Is um, it, or is it a K95? No, the KN are a little less... Optimal, I but I, he said that N95s are sometimes hard to get, but he, he wears those. What is this? I have three kids, five, three, and one, and our pediatrician does not recommend vaccine. I think we should find a new pediatrician. She's convinced the risks of the vaccine are worse than the roulette. No, 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 not at all. Nope. Find a new pediatrician. Find a pediatrician who will vaccinate for sure. This one's not good. Look at this. I just saw the lawsuit against Thermo and other big biotech companies by the Lax family. What do you think? It's an interesting ethical situation. So Thermo will sell HeLa cell products, most likely, right? I got it. Thermo Fisher, yeah, I'm sure that's it. Um, and the suit is to get some income, I presume, right? So it is an issue because at the time the cells were taken, there was no informed consent required. So it wasn't against the law. Today well, it is, right? Right. But the other thing is, is it wasn't taken just from her. They took sample. They took these discarded samples and they put them in culture. And hers happened to have the phenotype that they were looking for. But they had an entire like incubator room filled of samples from various people, from multiple people. Sure. So she, hers just happened to have the characteristics that they were looking for. It's not like they targeted her. However, it might be um, a good idea for them to make a settlement with the family to share some of the income, right? Since they make a lot of money from the cells. I, I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. If we, if we make a lot of money from the diagnostics that we're trying to develop using somebody's discarded nasal pharyngeal swaps, you want me to give that family money? Well, no, you've you've thrown it out. You well, don't. so they threw out the biopsy. The choice was to throw out the biopsy or to give it to this lab that wanted to try and develop a cell culture. Yeah, system. but her cells still still live. They're from her, right? That's the difference. In, a, in, a, in your test, that you've thrown away the material. It's not being perpetuated. That's the difference. I know. I don't really see the difference. That's but, fine. Okay. That's fine. I don't really quite get the difference. I was expecting no the Moderna booster not to have side effects. Man, was I wrong. Not as bad as the second, but still, why do we get side effects? It's your immune system responding, and people do it in different ways, and it's a good sign. But if you don't have it, that's fine, too. You've just responded really well, and that's actually a good way to know that it's working. If identical antigens are repeatedly presented to the immune system, is there a new round of somatic hypermutation each time? If yes, would any antibodies distinct from previous ones be produced? So actually, the, this was discussed on TWIV last Friday when we talked about the germline antibodies to SARS-CoV-2. And the answer is yes. Every time you get a little bit more somatic hypermutation. Whether it makes a difference or not is not clear in terms of affinity or broadness and so forth. But, yeah. yeah, you might get some different antibodies, yeah. In the ER, the B cell, can virus and antibodies synthesize at the same time? No, I don't believe that the virus will get into the ER, will it? It goes into the ergic, right? The coronaviruses butt into the ergic. But no, the that's mast cells butt into the ergic. There's no virus there. It's not the fully assembled. Nucleocapsid buds into the right, but it's not fully assembled in yeah. Texas virus. It's intermediate. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate free the incubator. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, okay, we answered that. Thank you, Sarah, for your support. Uh, I appreciate your contribution, but we'll answer your question either way. My wife and I are both double vaccinated. Two weeks ago, our eight-year-old daughter spent the day at her cousin's. We found out the cousin is positive. Are we in the clear? Is infection inevitable? Well, it's been over two weeks. 
Yeah, and it's not inevitable because 80% of infections are caused by 10 to 20% of the infected people. So in many families, transmission does not occur because for some reason, many people don't transmit well. So I think you're in the clear. As Amy said, it's been two weeks and um, everyone's okay. You're good. Why wouldn't a third mRNA shot create new memory cells or strengthen existing ones? No reason why it would not. The question is, would it make a broader antibody response that would say approximate what happens when you recover from an infection and get a vaccine boost? We don't know if that's the case. If it does, then that's a useful attribute of a booster, but we don't know yet. But I agree, it's possible. What do you think? Is it possible? It's possible that I grow wings too. <laughs> no, no, that's being facetious on a serious subject. Uh, I think, I think that it's highly unlikely, but sure, it's possible. I know someone who took three mRNA shots, sick for a week with rash. I'm not sure what this accomplished. Uh, I don't know why they got a rash, but some people do after vaccination and driven by inflammatory responses. I don't know. I get a rash just from stress. You like this format. You mean both of us sitting here? Yeah. So tomorrow, Daniel will be here next to me, and he'll do the same thing, except I'll let him answer all the questions. I, sh I could let you answer all the no, questions. I don't want to answer all the questions. I'm good. Canada medical officials are saying because we spaced out the doses, boosters so far are only for the most vulnerable. Sounds good. That's a great plan, and that's right. They spaced them out as they did in the U.K. and so forth. So Yeah, but still not long enough. It's not long enough? You want six months? Yeah. It's cute. Last week. <laughs> Last week, when my Amy told me my science teacher wasn't turning me into a ribosome, I breathed a sigh of release, but of course that was short-lived. I don't have many characters left to type, but... <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe she'll finish the story. Can you compare COVID for kids to measles in terms of death? Stop. Sorry? Stop. Oh, sorry. The uh, number I remember was 500 for measles. People seem to be accepting the number of COVID deaths. So measles death depend on where you live. In, in westernized countries, it is one in several thousand, but in places where there's malnutrition of kids, it could be one in 300. All right, so it really depends. People seem to be accepting the number of COVID deaths. Well, if it's someone you know who died, I don't think you accept it, right? That's not really nice. I think it's horrible that so many people have died. And uh, I'm sorry well, that some people feel that way. we're a population. CDC announced the fourth dose will be needed for some people. I told you this was going to get out of control, didn't I? Yeah, we all agreed that it was ridiculous. They're not. It's not my fault. I'm not in charge. Okay, Pete, I think enough 80-year-olds are getting hospitalized to justify. You can't just say that, Pete. You need to get the numbers from a reputable source, and we need to crunch them and apply appropriate statistics. Well, I don't I don't understand. I think enough 80-year-olds are getting hospitalized to justify a third dose. Are those 80-year-olds all vaccinated with robust immune responses? They may be all vaccinated. That doesn't mean you have a robust re immune response. Yes. So I don't So like that's the problem is that you read these stories and they say, "Oh, this person was vaccinated." Like Colin Powell. "Oh, this person was vaccinated." But if you don't ask whether or not they made an immune response, it doesn't matter if I'm vaccinated. I'm vaccinated against measles. It makes no difference. I have no immunity. So what? So then, what, what would I, so then, if I get measles and I die, they're going to write in my obituary. Well, Amy Rosenfeld, she was, died of measles, but was vaccinated. Who the fuck cares? It's totally ridiculous. Do, do viruses make sounds? Amy, I don't. I don't know. Any idea when six to four 
Six months of four-year-olds will be eligible for the vaccine. Next year. Next year sometime. Not not anytime soon. All right. My wife and I are double vaccinated. Okay, this one we already did. That's great. The number of cases have halved in Indiana. Are we winning the battle? Well, you know, there's there are waves, right? And so you don't know if there's going to be another one. It depends on the vaccine rate and so yeah, forth. There was an editorial that discussed this today in the Times about, you know, the waves and how we become euphoric and then we crash and become euphoric and then crash. I'm not understanding. <laughs> Virus infected people make sounds. <laughs> That's true. A background with New York City skyline would be nice. Well, so I could shoot in front of the window and you could see the New York City skyline. Where's the beautiful picture that you sent last Friday? What picture is that? Uh, with the sunset and the gold topped, the gold topped um, buildings. You sent it to me, and then yeah, I'm yeah, sure you a, sent it to Rich. And I'll Blake. show it next week because I have to dig it up, and I don't want to take the time. But yeah, that's a nice view. It's a view out the window. Would a booster, third Pfizer, after be better after 12 months than eight? That's what my wife did. She was in the Pfizer phase three, dropped out, so had both shots last year. I don't think 12 versus 8 matters, does it? No, I think they're both the same. No, but usually, like, when you boost, so, like, for measles, you get a boost at 8, you get your first inoculation at 18 months, and they boost you at 5 years. Yeah. And polio, you get your first three shots, and then they boost you at, like, 2 years, and then at 5 years. So it's not clear to me... They can spin this narrative any way they want, but it's right. not clear to me that, yeah. The SARS-CoV-2 acquire its spikes internal to the cell in which it's replicated or on its way out. It gets included in internally because it gets inserted into the membrane before it egresses from the cell. Can I show them a picture? Here, I, the, the thing I did today. What was that called? The, the Grand, Grand Rounds. Grand Rounds. Um, St. Barnabas. Here we go. Barnabas Grand Rounds. I'm going to show you a picture of this D614 aka jug, uh, Doug as soon as it downloads. Here we go. Here's a picture. Oh, this is perfect. It shows you a nice um, I have to get this this up. In it. Which one is this, Amy? Do you remember? It's camera 2. No, camera 2 is what we're on. There we go. Now let me get rid of the comment. So this uh, here is the nucleocapsid, RNA plus protein, and it's budding into this compartment, which is the ER Golgi intermediate compartment. Here's the uh, it's ER. It's not really a compartment, though. It's what not is really, it? It's just a region of the cytoplasm that's between the ER and the Golgi. But it's membrane-bound, see? No, it's not really. Look it's at not, this picture. The, well, the picture's wrong. It's from my textbook. It's wrong. <laughs> There are many things that are wrong in your textbook. Amy, why be nasty? <laughs> I'm not being nasty. I'm just being honest. Why be rude? I don't think it's wrong. It's a compartment. Why do you call it? It's called the intermediate I compartment. A, I don't believe it's a membrane bound compartment. Okay, we'll look it up. Somebody okay. look it up and tell us. Fine. What's the ergic? Anyway, it requires the spike inside the cell, not at the cell membrane, as many other viruses do. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate your support. John Oliver has a featureless void. Have you ever seen John Oliver? No. I haven't either. He has a white background. Okay. Listen, folks, we'll get to something you all like. Don't worry. Well, actually, I have to like it. It doesn't matter if they like it. It's the way it What works. if I hide it from you? How are you going to hide it from me? Well, you don't watch these live streams, so you won't see them. I see the background when I participate. Okay. I know. Once I tried to change something and Amy didn't like it. Thoughts on steroid treatment for COVID prophylactic or treatment. All right. So steroids, as Daniel Griffin says, these are his words. You use steroids later in infection when you have an inflammatory phase, not early when you're trying to clear or reduce viral loads because the steroid will impair the immune response. So only late in severe COVID. Well, therefore, it can never be a prophylactic. 
Can never be a prophylactic, no. And we're not used to prevent symptoms from SARS in 2003. What do you think about molnupiravir? All right. Amy, do you have thoughts? I do, but I will let you go no, first. No, you can go first. So first of all, I'm surprised it was only 50% effective at preventing hospitalization in the in the trial, the phase three trial. Nevertheless, it's an orally given drug, and I think it can be useful. Um, and as Amy tells me, it's not likely that resistance will emerge. Right, Amy? Right. Um, so I think certain individuals oversold it. Who, who oversold it? Me? Apparently. You're one of them. But it's okay. Uh, you would think I'm your greatest enemy. I didn't say it has nothing to do with whether or not you're my greatest enemy or whatever. I think there are certain things that you that were a topic that you liked, and it was and it was slightly and it was slightly oversold. And then I think that this idea that um, it's going to be uh, a mutagen has also been oversold and made it now that nobody, you know, wants it. I think that people need to recognize that drugs, just like everything else, you know, they're not going to be perfect. There's going to be a limit to them. And 50% is fine when you have nothing. Yeah, it's fine when you have nothing. I just was surprised that it wasn't better, that's all, because it did very well in uh, Well, trials. animal studies are not people. You know that. Did you know that? Yeah. Ferrets are not humans. Right. Yeah. And you knew that. And so it's not really surprising that you would get a different result. Yes. And we're not yes. curing ferrets of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Understood. Although maybe we should. Is it possibly a weaker precursor of SARS-2 spread throughout 2019 in humans undetected? Uh, I think it's unlikely because they've done serological tests on sera from earlier in the year, and they're negative. And that if it's a, just a weaker precursor, it should have turned up positive for SARS-CoV-2 Well, antibodies. I don't know what makes it a precursor. Does a precursor have to have the same antigenic structure? I think it'd have to be similar because then it wouldn't be SARS-CoV-2, right? Well, I don't know what makes it SARS-CoV-2. Is it the antigen? Is it an antibody, a specific antibody, or is it the similarity of a genome? Because you can imagine that the nu- that the if you do neutralization assays and the neutral and the sites are are differ by two amino acids, that you would not pick it up. So I don't know what makes you a precursor. I don't understand. So an ancestral virus. How about that? Well, right, but how are you defining the ancestral virus? So you can't find the virus, right? So you can't align the sequences. So you could have had something, but because you're screening with and looking for neutralization, it might not be close enough, right? You only need to change one amino acid, apparently, and alter the affinity rate. So if you change two at both ends of the epitope then it would not bind at all, right? But if you did actual lysis and binding assays, you might find something. So yeah. I I don't know that we've made the right conclusion. I, you, what's the, you think there might have been a I precursor? I don't know. I don't know if there is or if there isn't. I just don't understand how... I'm thinking about it differently. I'm thinking about it, it is a ancestral virus to SARS-CoV-2, which on a phylogenetic tree would be clearly ancestral in terms of the, the Yeah, but genome, you, ha- but right? you, right, but where are you making that decision? What protein are you using to align that? Are, are spike, we, let's, let's do spike. Well, is that how the ancestral tree is done? Is that the equivalent of VP1? Well, the problem Because you can do VP1 and get one set of yeah, results, and you can do the whole genome and get a slightly different set of results. Um, SARS is the most divergent, so it would be good to make a tree with that. But I'm saying if you use polyclonal sera, you're likely to see cross-reactivity. That's all. And we haven't seen any cross-reactivity in any sera. So I don't don't think anything close to SARS-CoV-2 was in people in 2019. Right, but there's clearly, you can clearly see the evolution of rhino rhino B to rhino A. And theoretically, there is no cross-reactivity if you define it as neutralizing antibodies. Okay. Right. Okay. So we can't answer your question because of Amy's argument. <laughs> we can't 
can't answer. I just don't know what it means. I'm just that's fine. fine. So it could have been antigenically diverged, but still a precursor. Yeah, I just Speaking don't know around. how to. I don't know how you're going to define it. If I don't, you don't know, Amy. Have... I bet twenty virologists would agree with me on that one. They could. I could be wrong, but I think that if you think outside the box and you expand it a bit more, right. that I understand your argument. I get it. So you want to say to him, yeah, it could have been because we didn't. No, pick it I'm up? just saying. I I'm just saying by by the metrics that we're using today, there isn't. But if we used a different set of metrics, we would find a different ex- we would find a different answer. It's like when you test a drug, you only know of the activity that the drug has for the assay that you tested. If you, <clears throat> it could have some completely other activity. But since you didn't make a test for it, you have okay. no idea. All right, all right. So, um, someone says here, can't people get a quick antigen test to know if they should go to work or not? Gee. How about that idea of a quick, cheap antigen testing? I don't know. I'm sitting down, and, and I'm not drinking. So, despite what people think that I'm, I come to these live streams. All right. Drunk. Does fever have an antiviral effect in a SARS-CoV-2 infection? We don't know. No one has investigated. I don't know. Uh, but it's thought to do so in some infections, right? But we just don't yeah. know. Mario, thank you for your contribution. Amy, Amy, you are like an addict without a fix being away from the lab and not doing plaques and elices and grants and manuscripts. Kind of. You want to go now? No, I'm fine. Okay. See, this is one, one episode of the year where Amy gets to stay to the end. <laughs> fine. Um, there, there's, Charlotte wants to make Amy a picture of your vi- of you. Send you send her a picture of you, and she wants to have a make okay. a picture for you. Sure, you can send it. Do you ha- know who? She, do you have her information? No, send me an email, Vincent at microbe TV, and I'll connect you. With well, you it. have multi- all the pictures, so you can just send it. Want me to send one that I have? Yeah, sure. In your opinion, what would have been the proper interval between the two Pfizer doses? Uh first dose and then second dose, six to eight months later. Yes. And it was rushed because we were in a pandemic and we needed to get this thing tested. What can one do to get into genetic research? How do they want to get into genetic research? Like as the researcher or the subject? I don't know. Maybe I would assume do it. I don't think people want to be subjects of genetic research. I don't know. Everybody seems to love sending their samples to 23andMe and Ancestry.com. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I don't know. I mean, some depends, people I don't in know. my family did it, and they were shocked to find out that they were 100% Jewish. And I was like, seriously? Um, MH, I don't know where you are in your educational career. If you're in high school or college, if you're in college, you should major in some science related to genetics. Uh, and then, That would be biology. Uh, and then you could get a job when you get out working in a lab as a technician to see if you like it. And if you do, then you could get a PhD or a master's. You don't need to get a PhD. Well, they also don't need to work in a lab at this point in time. You can just do the bioinformatics. Yes. Yeah, you could do computational biology as well if you're so inclined. I'm still confused about masks. Why are cloth masks considered just as good as PPE for the common man? Would proper PPE for everyone put a dent in infection rates? Yeah, the, the proper PPE masks are considered to be better than cloth masks. Daniel has said that. But uh, yeah, I don't know the reason, but if if you wear some mask, it's better than nothing. And so if someone wants a face, a Spider-Man face on their face and they'll wear it, let them wear it. You hear the... the I hear the fire engines. Fire engines. I hear. It's New York City. Somebody's having a fire. Do you use counters for plaque counting? Blind blind counters for plaque I don't know counter. what a blind counter but you do it by hand you take a little magic marker yeah, and, you and you make a dot every make a dot on yeah. the plaque and you count them and you yeah. write the number on the plate well we write it on a sheet we lose the plate we have too many plates I think the government should increase the time between doses the problem is Henry that they have not been approved with a longer interval so you'd have to do a trial you know that's the way the FDA works in the US anyway 
And other countries like Canada and the UK got reamed for not following the protocol. How long do you think virions could remain viable on an N95 mask after use? After a month, could someone be sure that it's not infectious in any way? What virion? SARS-CoV-2. Oh, it's gone by then. It's tr it's, it's gone dehydrated. in a month. Yes, it, it won't last more than a few days on a uh, surface, and if you put it at warm temperatures, it'll even go faster. So a month is absolutely fine. Yep. Considering Merck, et cetera, companies will make effective medicine to cure COVID. Could you estimate when the world will go back to normal again? N Amy. Uh, go back to normal? Didn't you say five years total? Yeah. So we have three more years, right? Two and a half. We're at the end. Of, uh, yeah. We're at the end of the second year. Or, yeah. Or maybe even... If you say that the pandemic was really earlier than the early cases were really earlier than what were initially reported or documented or, yeah. Dan probably. Daniel wants to know how the weather is on the Upper West Side, but not, we're not really on the Upper West Side. We're in Midtown West. We're on 7th Avenue and 30th Street. And it's kind of cloudy. It's, uh, well, my phone, my it's, it's uh, 13 Celsius and... Pretty cloudy here. It's not or, your phone, it's your watch. My watch. My it's watch. Like the James Bond of watches. It can do everything. Where are my blue specs? Those are at home. I, I wear those at home only. And I do these usually at home. It's unusual that I'm here today. What are the obstacles to overcome the development of mRNA for other viruses, vaccines, I guess? It is an issue of getting inside the virus membrane. Getting inside the virus membrane. I don't know. No, the, putting the mRNA in the membrane, putting it in a nanoparticle is not an issue. It's finding the right antigen and um, testing it. That's they're not huge obstacles. However, well, manufacturing is the hugest obstacle. Yeah, manufacturing might be, but testing, you know, it depends on the virus. It needs to be around. If you if there are no infections, you can't test it. So that's a problem. But you will see more mRNA vaccines tested in the coming years now because of this, for sure. Well, they're already being tested. They've already been developed and been tested. Can you tell me about post-polio? So post-polio, I explained this today in a class. You, um, you get polio, you say your limbs are paralyzed, you, go, you do physical therapy, you regain limb function, and you live many years with, without any issues. You're no longer paralyzed. And then... 30 to 40 years after the paralysis, you suddenly become paralyzed again and you're in a wheelchair post-polio. There's no infectious process. Um, it's not long polio because you've been polio-free for all those years. There's no virus present. What we think happens is you've lost a lot of neurons. As you age, you lose neurons. And now you've lost too many as a consequence of polio infection. And now uh, you don't have enough to move your muscles. So that's long polio. But now that we are close to eradicating polio, the numbers will be declining as those individuals pass on. Well, it's not clear that other sources that cause AFM, those kids won't have the same kind of post-AFM. That's right. It will be post-AFM, not post-polio, though, right? Well, yeah, because it's no longer poliomyelitis. It's AFM. Would a highly susceptible person benefit from a third dose? What is, what is a highly susceptible person? I don't know what that means. Like, like Daniel, who's constantly exposed. Yeah, Daniel got a third dose already. Oh, he did? I thought he was opposed to it. I think he got it. Didn't he say that on one of his uh I must have missed that. Thingies? must have been when I was eating cookies. You don't eat cookies. <laughs> yeah, You were I probably it. doing plaque assays. Probably. So, yeah, certain individuals, immunosuppressed, transplant patients and so forth, yeah. they. Well, I never understood really the immunosuppressed because if you're immunosuppressed again with B cell deficiencies, how's the third boost going to help your antibodies? What do you mean by help, Amy? Well, how's it going to boost your antibody response if you're immunosuppressed because you have no B cells or your B cells aren't making any antibodies to begin with? Or didn't make any response, you know, so I don't understand. You're not, I mean, like, this ubiquitous term of immunosuppression is 
hard to define, right? There's lots of forms of immunosuppression. So all I can say is there was a study published a few months ago of transplant patients, and they looked at their seroconversion after each dose. And a fraction of them did not seroconvert after two doses, but did so after three doses. Yeah, but if you take like RAP, you're not suppressing your B cells, you're suppressing your, yeah, your T cells. I'm just saying that's where the idea right. that I'm just comes saying, from. Right, but that's not really the right that's not really the right experiment. But you asked me, what's the point of giving yeah. three doses? And I'm telling you that's I got the it. data. No, you didn't get it because you said what's the point of you saying that? <laughs> I got Someone it. said here Amy's honesty is refreshing and shows how difficult is this subject. The comparing of thoughts between two experts also serves as an example of an intellectual versus emotional discussion. Yeah, why are you getting so emotional? I'm not emotional. I'm smiling. I'm smiling. Hey, I just saw a thumbs up floating across the screen. So oh. they do sometimes, Amy. Well, that's not good enough because all the thumbs down floated down. I saw a report on Singapore. The big increase was among the weight Five percent who are not vaccinated. Thoughts? Oh, that's where the, you would see the big increase, right? In the unvaccinated. Five percent of what's the population of Singapore? Many millions. It's a lot of people. It's not that many. Infected. What's not that many? Many millions. Uh, yeah, when you're, you're a country of two hundred and thirty thirty million, and you're talking about a country that may be like Israel, that's nine million. Protective heterologous T-cell immunity in COVID is induced by the trivalent MMR and Tdap vaccine antigens. Why? Have you seen this report, Amy? No idea. I have trouble believing this, uh, Mark. I'm sorry. I have to look at the report. It I makes never, no sense. I, you know, I've never, I, I, I don't know. You know, T-cell immunity is, is quite virus specific, so this doesn't make a lot of sense to us. I, didn't, I don't know anything about it. Uh, Amy, my colleague, took a full-strength mRNA as this booster, was sick for a reason, got a rash. Oh, we already did this already. I'm sorry. Why do antibodies to HIV not protect against AIDS? Uh, because the virus changes in the patient. As the patient makes antibodies, the virus changes to evade the antibodies. And then when the patient makes new antibodies against the new variant, it changes again. So... That's antigenic variation. That's why uh, antibodies don't protect. What biologic factors favor a virus being able to be eradicated? All right, so you need two things. One, humans are the only host. The virus doesn't infect other animals. And two, uh, lifelong immunity conferred by vaccination or infection. I'm not sure that polio is lifelong immunity. Well, it's at least 40 years, according uh, to an Inuit study that I cited today in my class. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that that one was correct. Anyway, the polio and long. smallpox are eradicable because they fit both bills. Influenza infects many birds around the world, so you never get rid of influenza. And SARS-CoV-2 infects a variety of animals also, so can't eradicate it. No, but measles is very hard to eradicate. You know, that's next on the WHO's list of eradication, Amy. I do know, and they've been so successful at it. How likely is EBV reactivation theory as a possible cause of long COVID? So this idea was floated by the CEO of Moderna on Monday. And... I don't believe that he said, I don't believe what he say, said when he cited this was correct. So he's like, because a lot of symptoms of long COVID look like mononucleosis and that, you know, 80% of people who have my, uh, multiple sclerosis or EVB positive and stuff. And I think that Ian might have a problem with this. Okay. So he was wrong. Yeah, I, I don't think he was correct. Thank you, Kat, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. How does molnupiravir work? So molnupiravir uh, gets incorporated. No, oh, this is a mutagen, right? Right. It gets incorporated in templates as a different base and causes mutations in the viral uh, genome to inactivate infectivity does what we call pushing the virus over its error threshold. Yes. 
So mutagen. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a t-shirt of Vincent slaying mice. I don't think so. I don't think that would be welcome in the world. I don't think I would like that. I'm hearing conflicting info about whether infection or vaccination-induced immunity is more protective of potential future variants. What do you know about this, Amy? Well, I mean, that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing, right? As they keep writing papers saying, oh, look, you got the vaccine and you're protected against Delta. Oh, look, you got the vaccine and you're pre protected against Delta with extra credit. And... <laughs> And, oh, look, you should get vaccinated so we reduce the amount of, uh, of viruses replicating to reduce the potential of immune escape and stuff, right? Um, and then you have the people who are saying that, you you know, you need this large breadth of antibodies that you get from infection because you're infected by a quasi-species. But at the end of the day... Mm. All of them are protecting you against developing severe disease, right? So if you get a week-long sniffles, it may not be so bad. No. The no. only question is is whether or not any of this protects against the development of long-term COVID. Exactly. Right? And you can only do that if you monitor long-term COVID or whatever it's called nowadays um, in patients who have been reinfected. Someone wants to know what EBV is. Epstein-Barr virus, a herpes virus, mm -hmm. mononucleosis, a variety of cancers. Okay, I, um, I just had flu cell vax, a quadruple vaccine for four strains. That's right. Could you do COVID at the same time? Yes. You could. You could, yeah, as we said earlier. Does the nanoparticle of a mechanism work like an exosome with proteins on the nanomembrane for recognition? I don't know that there are proteins on the membrane of a nanoparticle. No. The nanoparticles bring RNA into the cell which and delivers it, right? Yeah, but an exosome would bring RNA into the cell. Just buds, But since it buds off the cell membrane, it has yeah. membrane proteins in it. But it, it's never clear to me that those membrane proteins actually mediate fusion or if it's just the fact that the lipids are so close together. What's a, what about vaccines based on NK cells? I just sent you the paper that talked about NK cells. What are they doing with NK cells? There is some correlation between NK cell dysfunction and severity of disease. So uh, what do you mean... Um, a vaccine based on NK cells. I'm not clear exactly what you would do with that. You want to deliver NK cells? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not clear. Now, you probably heard of CAR T-cell therapy, where they take T-cells from cancer patients and they introduce a vector into them that makes the cells produce a T-cell receptor specific for a tumor antigen and they put them back in the patient. You can do that with NK cells, too. You can make CAR NK cells. So it's typically done for cancers. I, w I don't think that's a virus approach, although it could be for latent viruses, maybe. Well, I think it is an HIV approach. Yes, it's an HIV approach. But if you're latent, like a herpes virus infected cell, you don't have any markers on the surface right. of the cell. So you're going to then go inside the cell to try and find things that make lat transcript? Doesn't sound right. All right. Two doses, no adverse reactions in a lupus patient. Is it better to get third dose or no dose? I don't see why a lupus would be a contraindicator. Do you? No. no and, one? and Daniel would Daniel would always say just get vaccinated. But you're already vaccinated. So waiting um, for Novavax is beginning to look like waiting for good dough. I must have missed what that. What time reference. is Q&A with Daniel? 5 p.m. Eastern Time Thursday. From the incubator, thank you for your contribution. Really appreciate it. So if the vaccine RNA goes into a B cell that synthesizes the spike antibody, any complex formation interference possibly? Yeah, but the vaccine is not going to go into a B cell. Not very much because the, most of the cells that are going to take up the mRNA vaccine, I guess if you're thinking about are antigen-presenting cells that phagocytose. 
So I think this would be a minority effect, if anything. Well, even if you did it with adenovirus, it would not go in because it's not the right receptor. Right. If vaccination is only about spike, would B-cell maturation be more broad and immune maturation from infection be more specific since you're exposed to more epitopes? Yes. But... It's you more know, specific because you have more variants in that population. That virus the, infection is not one virus. It's thousands of viruses, yes. and they are not always the same. They are most likely not the same. Well, but in the end, the antibodies, I'm not sure the antibody response would benefit because it's mainly the spike antibodies that are going to be blocking infection, right? I don't know. Some people now think that maybe nucleocapsid antibodies do. Oh, yeah? What's the mechanism? I don't know. But for T cells, yes, you'd have a broader T cell reactivity, and that could be good for sure. And many people are thinking about that in next-generation vaccines. Uh, how is T cell immunity measured? You have to harvest T cells and stimulate them and look for interferon gamma. Yeah, you take them out of a patient, you add peptides, and you measure interferon gamma. Yep. Any new information about Sputnik or Chinese vaccines? I haven't seen anything new. Not published anyway. Have you, Amy? No. I have an 83-year-old dad who has three Moderna shots. He's pretty much, is he pretty much invincible or should he still wear an N95, et cetera? What do you think, Amy? Um, I would always side on the caution of wearing a mask, depending on where I'm going. If it's with a bunch of people that I don't know, probably that. If it's with my same family and stuff, then I would think it would be fine. He's invincible. This it depends on regulations. Like here in New York, you have to wear masks in restaurants. No, you have to. No, you have to be vaccinated, but you don't have to wear a mask in a restaurant. You don't. No. You have to wear a mask, like when you go. You have to be actually. You don't have to wear a mask. Masks now, except for like on public transportation, I believe are yeah. optional. You have to go inside the restaurant, to go inside the museum, to go inside the gym. You have to we you have to demonstrate that you're vaccinated. It's common mm -hmm. courtesy that you wear a mask inside the Trader Joe's or the Zabars because they don't have somebody standing in the door that is asking you whether or not you're vaccinated to show your vaccine pass. So it's common courtesy that you wear a mask. So. So when I go to Zabar's or Trader Joe's, there are people who work for Trader Joe's who are not wearing masks. And then there are patrons of the store who are not wearing masks. And they don't, there's no repercussion like before against them where people would complain. Mm -hmm. uh, but but subway courtesy. and trains, you need to wear masks. Yes, because those that. are under federal regulation because yes. they're interstate. And then the New York City Department decided, if it wasn't interstate, to continue that policy. Okay. What course should I take for animal studies if lab rats have very long telomeres that render them as poor human substitutes? I, that's a very confusing question. If you want to do animal studies, there are courses in college that you would take for that. Animal husbandry, for example, and so forth. There's no course in college for animal yeah, husbandry. Yeah, it's for, in some specialized colleges, oh, for really? sure. Not maybe at Emory, but yeah, elsewhere. Can horses get COVID, Amy? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think. I don't think so. Should public health authorities be telling people not to use cloth masks, but only surgical and KN95? No. I don't believe so. I think, I think that uh, they should advocate any mask that you. Can I think any use. mask you can get. Uh huh. Hmm. Pre-existing. Everyone is telling you pre-existing, Amy. Look, I'm not an insurance company. Can't deny. So now we're getting to the insurance. Uh, Sarah won't take her money back. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not going to give it back. But I don't do this for the money. Someone at the very beginning said, why don't you turn on the Super Chat? So I did. And uh, okay, but I don't do it for that. I really appreciate your support. And it pays the bills, as Amy says. It does. 
and apparently somebody just told you to buy me some wine. And first he th- he wrote he spelled wine like a whiny child, W H I N E, and then he was, went, "Oh no, I mean W I N E." CBC is our national TV radio service. That's, I guess, Canada. Okay. Mark says, what are your and Amy's favorite novel or work of fiction? Okay, you can go. Um, I like the the novels of John Irving very much. I read all of them. Did you? Yeah, I read them after. Yeah, I read them because you told me to. You said you liked them, so I read them. Gosh, you don't often do what I ask. That's not true. But um, I like them very much, starting with The World According to Garp and, and earlier ones as well, or looking at his development oh, as a writer. and and stuff. Oh, and Meany was wonderful, yeah. I like those very much. Um, <laughs> what's the rate of infection among those in the vaccine trials? How many reinfections in initial COVID patients? I'm sorry, Marina. I don't have those numbers at hand for you. They're all available. Um, but I'd have to, to look them up because I don't, wouldn't want to say them wrong. You know, the rate of infection, are you talking about vaccine versus placebo? They didn't look at infection. They looked at disease. They looked at COVID. So they didn't study the rate of infections. And reinfection in initial patients, again, it depends on what you're asking. A PCR positive test or disease, they're different. How can pharmacies store the mRNA vaccines in extremely cold temperatures? Well, it, one, you can get dry ice, but two, they're, they've been adapted so that you don't need any special equipment anymore. Right. Thank you uh, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Is an individual still protected from immunological memory, even if measles type? Oh, I already answered this. Yeah, we already I'm so this. sorry. My apologies. Is Should someone who has been fully vaccinated be more afraid of flu than COVID? Well, flu can kill you. You can get as many as 40,000 people dying a year in the U.S. of flu, so you should get vaccinated. I wouldn't be afraid of it because you have a vaccine. Yeah, but when you get what, what, when people have the sniffles, their first, their first thing is, oh my God, I might have COVID and I should stay home. When people get the sniffles earlier and it was a flu, nobody said, oh my God, I might have the flu, I should stay home. Why is that, Amy? Uh, probably we've been desensitized. Like, nobody really talks about the fact that 100,000 Americans die every year of the flu. Well, not every year, but some years 40,000. Yeah, but, okay, fine. 40 to 100,000. But, you know, all at once, we had 700,000 die because we're an immune-naive population. Is that what it's going to be? Is that reflective of what it's going to be when it's when we are no longer an immune naive population? Because at some point we were an immune naive population for flu, right? And you could say that that naive immune population for flu was last seen, you know, in 1918, right? And a couple million people died. Uh, is there data on blood clots from Sputnik? I don't know. I don't, I'm not aware of any. It's a good question. I'm not aware of any. I don't keep track. Do you recommend a second vaccine for all J&J recipients across the board or, or only for those for high risk? You know, I think for J&J it makes sense because it really it needs a booster. It needs a second shot. And so I've, I've seen the data with Daniel. We've talked about it. I, I think... Everyone should get a second shot. It doesn't have to be J&J. It could be something else. Elizabeth says, they're not denying coverage. I think they're refusing to pay medical bills for the unvaxxed. <laughs> okay. I am a chosen not to get the 3X booster because I'm approaching the sixth month. At what month is it prudent to get the boost? I only wish to reduce mortality chance. Then you're probably, depending on your age, you're probably fine. Six months or later, right? 
Yeah, but probably, like, if he's somewhere around your age or younger, he's probably fine. So Greg wants to know what the risks of a booster are. So There are no risks. There really aren't any. Uh, so there's no downside, and I understand that. I just am telling people why I don't think there's a need for them. But if you want it, it's, there's no downside to it, no. Well, all. there's no medical downside, right? Right. There's, a, there's, in theory, an equivalence, right, downside. Like that f less than 2% of Africa is vaccinating and the wealthy countries have, you know, 70% of the people vaccinated. And theoretically, you could send, the, you know, you could send those vaccines to China to help the, you know, when mom used to say, eat your, your dinner because there are starving people in the world. Right? It's kind of that philosophy. If most children are asymptomatic, how do we know if vaccinated ones are less likely to pass virus on? PCR tests not the best for the job, and few get tested. I agree with that, don't you? We don't know. And children, at least. We don't know in most people. Most people either. We don't know if vaccinated people transmit. And many people conclude that they do, but we don't so see So the thing is, is, is the test that they do now is a single. I don't have a problem with the fact that it's a PCR test. I have a problem with the fact that it's a single snapshot and it's really just right. exposure. It's not demonstrating anything else, but it's being interpreted as something else. That's my problem. Charlotte, thank you for your contribution. Thank really you very appreciate much. it. And you know, if you don't want to contribute, just give us a thumbs up. Uh, we have uh, 680 people here. 312 thumbs up. Can That's we great. get some? Give us a thumbs up. That's all. We appreciate it. Do you ha think the head of the FDA is ideally led by a public health specialist, while NIH is best led by an MD and or PhD? Amy has, has opinions on this for sure. What do you think, Amy? Why do I have opinions on it for sure? You have opinions on everything, no? <laughs> no. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's good. No, it's not taken to be a good con, con a good. Uh, well, I'm giving trait. it in a good way. Well, I mean, what is the goal of the FDA? It's to prevent, like, the jungle from happening again, right? Yeah, well, the jungle is about food, right? That's. Uh, but that's Department what started it. Okay, right? fine. No? I, I don't know. I thought it was I, the Department of Agriculture that took care of food. But yeah, the FDA. The Food and Drug Administration. Yeah, well, yeah, the <laughs> FDA agriculture takes care of the animals, right, that are slaughtered. And, I, thought, okay, fine. I thought that. Anyway, the anyway. FDA head, should that be a public health specialist? I'm not sure public health, CDC should be a public health right. specialist. NIH I think, I think be, the, uh, the FDA needs to understand something about drugs and, and food and stuff. And I think that NIH, if its goal is research, should be headed by somebody who appreciates basic science and yeah, research. Agreed. And whether or not that's an MD or a PhD is, it's just an, you have to understand what research is and what basic science research does and how long it takes and various other things. Thank you, Kev, for your support. Really appreciate it. And Victoria, I was pregnant end of second trimester before the vaccine and contracted COVID. Should I still get vaxxed while breastfeeding? Absolutely. Yes, can give your baby more antibodies. That's good. Uh, thank you for the Jillian Michaels thumbs up. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tina, for your support. You, to be honest, you are all a pretty long-winded, but the funny stories help me retain the information. I'm sorry I'm long-winded. That's what the scientists do. They talk a lot. Would it be possible to make an mRNA vaccine using the whole particle instead of spike only? Too big an RNA? The RNA would be too big, yeah. Yeah, uh, mRNA spike is manageable. What produces infected cell with vaccine? Only spike, part of spike, and how immune system know to identify the whole virus when real infection is present? Uh, 
I'm, I'm trying to parse this question. The immune system only sees what's presented to it. It doesn't know there's an infection. It just knows there are foreign proteins present. And they're just turned on by that, and they begin to make defenses. And so that can happen with a spike alone, with an infectious virus vaccine, with an inactivated virus vaccine. They're foreign antigens, and they're recognized as such, and we make an immune response. Does that make sense, Dr. Rosenfeld? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know how that answers the first, what produces infected cells with vaccine. I don't really know what produces what produces inf- I think that the there's a few words missing. Yeah. So I don't really know what the que- I don't really understand the question. People making noise in the hallway, Amy. I hear. Shankadi Kradi seemed to indicate that COVID obtained better immunity than natural immunity. Yes, he did suggest that, but, you know, it really depends who you speak with. So I think it's too early to say either way, essentially. Is this overkill? I went to a party with six other people indoors. I was the only one wearing a mask. Nobody else Everyone said they were vaccinated. Should I have kept my mask on? So you took it off. I think it's fine, it's fine to be in mask. I think it's fine. If everyone's vaccinated, you should be fine. Do you think it's reasonable to get a vaccine for a four-year-old once it's approved for five to 12 years? You can't, right? Not that I'm aware of. You wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I guess you'd have to lie about the age of the kid. You'd have to lie about the age of the kid some way, yeah. It'd be tough. Uh, all right, I'm not going to answer that one. That's nasty. Please please uh, get rid of that one, folks. Our immunology is not weak. WHO just presented Director General Award to Lawrence Lack, son of Hila, for a contribution to science and medicine, even though it was unknowing. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's good. But I think they should go beyond that, right? Will you have a raffle to get some of us into the incubator, the ink? We'll, we'll get some way to get people to visit, right, Amy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's another interesting one with respect to old samples being repurposed. What about the lung samples from World War II flu victims used to get sequence of 1918 flu? Would their families have a claim for reimbursement? They didn't make anything from it, right? So They made virus. Virus, but it's not a vaccine. It's not sold. It doesn't make money. So I think not, but— Oh, so that's the qualifier. Making money. That's the qualifier. Well, it's not my qualifier, but I think the well, Lacks you're family wants, it. wants reimbursement from the company, right? That's why they're suing them, because they've made a lot of money over the years. Well, I understand that intellectual property is not always money. Well, it's not just about intellectual property, but it doesn't matter. If a country was looking to eradicate COVID so it was no longer endemic, would third shots make sense? No. no. Because your immunity is going to wane eventually. Well, anyway. it doesn't make any sense because there are other hosts. There are other you hosts can't also. Eradicate. I know. I understand that, but this is focused on antibodies only. But yes, because there are other hosts, you can't eradicate it. What do you think of the increasing evidence that herbs play a significant role in CNS diseases like ALS? I'm not convinced. I think it's really hard to prove that. And especially without an animal model. Do you, do you, are you aware of any of those data? I don't believe in them, but hey, if somebody wants to, that's fine with me. Thank you, Sandy, for your uh, contribution. How does an immune system respond to bacterial infections? Very similarly. We make antibodies. We make T cells that uh, attack the bacteria. Very similar response. 
Israeli severe disease numbers in vax versus unvax are sometimes reported as similar. Is this often not the case in the U.S. due to the higher, higher natural infection numbers? Uh, I, I don't understand the reason for that in Israel, and many of those studies have been criticized. Many of those studies handpick and cherry pick the data that they want to present. Right. So I would take them with a large grain of salt, frankly. Before COVID vaccines, was mRNA technology only being used to develop treatment for solid tumors? No, it was used for uh, testing other vaccines, right? It was used for paramyxovirus vaccines. No. It was used for Zika vaccine. It was used for some others. It will detail. Well, so he talks about it. In, uh, so you're bumping my chair. Watch out. Sorry. <laughs> so he talks about the fact that they had tested it Um for Zika, and that's when he went to Tony Fauci, and mm -hmm. that's when he got the government to be, to basically support his company. So it was tested in some, for some other viruses. For just well, for not, Zika. But weren't they developing it for other viruses too? No, I'm they, pretty sure no. in the uh, article about the lady at Penn, they were talking about that. Yeah, well— Moderna was a cancer company, and then they did then because of Zika and the Zika data. Then he went to Fauci and Bernie Graham, Bernie Graham, okay. And then they established the collaboration, and then basically they were pushed forward because they already had the ends with Tony and Barney. Why is hospitalization in the UK increasing despite high vaccination rates? Because they got rid of all uh, physical distancing, masking, and everything. And they didn't account for the fact that there's still 20% of the population that's un yes. un unvaccinated. Exactly. And so are boosters real actually a third dose? What does that mean? Are boosters actually a third mean, dose? I don't know what that means. Do you think mRNA vaccines focused on T-cell epitopes be more strongly considered from now on? Uh, I don't know why you suggest that. I don't know how that would work. Why, why would you focus it? You know, if you put a spike in, it's going to have both kinds of epitopes. You wouldn't separate them in any way. So I don't think you would do that. I like this. I'm part of the Texas CARE studies. So it sounds like there's a section of Texas that cares. I'm part of Texas CARES and tested negative for N antibody. Is there any chance of being naturally infected but test with a false negative? Um. Yeah, but you take the test again to make sure that it's not a false negative. Um, but you should be anti antibody to N positive unless you had a very mild, barely progressive infection, which I doubt. So I would just do it again. Yeah, Texas cares. Yeah, that's, I've heard of that. <laughs> Is it wise to take a J&J &J booster after receiving your double Pfizer? Sure. Yeah, it's Go fine. Ahead. It's fine. It's not a problem. It would be easier to hear what Amy says if her mic was located further to her right. Further to the right. Of course, it's almost at the end of this, so sorry about that. Will SARS-CoV-2 mutate to be less deadly but more contagious? No. It hasn't mutated to be more contagious. Maybe less deadly. Who knows? But it could take a long time. Australia's green lighting Pfizer boosters for over 18s, six months post second dose. I'm not sure if I'll get one. I'm not interested in chasing antibody boosts. I don't, I would agree with you, but you've, you know that already. And here's an answer. Do viruses make sounds? Virus-infected people make sounds. What do you think of that, Amy? It's true. But some people would say that viruses make sound by the bond motion between the molecules. Are but, cases uh, in New York City going down? Yes, absolutely. Actually, Daniel is on rounds at Columbia, and he hasn't seen any COVID cases. So none at Columbia. That's right. That's right. Do you think there's some kind of interaction between RSV, flu, and SARS, which might account for decreased rates of the first two last winter? No. I don't think so, no. There's no evidence for that. 
No, I mean it's very clear that they that they were that those the circulation of those viruses was due to physical distancing and masking, and that once we reduced, once we got rid of those, those viruses rebounded. Mm-hmm. Whatsoever and SARS has been and SARS CoV two has been circulating the entire time, so it's very clear. Uh, I'm not vaccinated, but if I do decide, should I take the first vaccine then wait six months? Yep, right. That's the Amy advice, right? Yes. A A Amy advice. Well, Amy advice is never to say start off with the sentence of "I'm not vaccinated." <laughs> That's the Amy well, as you advice. said, I might. I, I understand, but never start off a sentence with I'm not vaccinated. Why is uh, virus transmission more efficient in winter than summer? Depends or, on the virus. Well, it depends on the virus. So polio transmitted better in the summertime and influenza better in the winter. Uh, we don't really understand. It may have something to do for at least the winter viruses, relative humidity and temperature, but... Not a lot has been done to understand that, well, unfortunately. Well, I don't know if that's true because when you get closer to the equator, your your seasonality gets lost for all of yeah, these viruses. That's true. That's true. So in some places, there's no seasonality like the tropics. Actually, in the tropics, flu is seasonal, but there's no winter. So go figure that. It's very puzzling. I'm getting pressured to get a booster, a 70-year-old female healthy as far as I know, from everything I've heard, you guys say it's a no for me. <laughs> That's what we're saying. We don't think you need it. If you're healthy, you don't have to. I know you're getting pressured to do it, but we don't think uh, there's any need to do that. Do we know if these vaccines will give us cell-mediated immunity or only humoral? Isn't T-cell cell-mediated immunity? Yes, yes, it so is. Gives you cell-mediated immunity. They induce T cells, and um, the T cells are interesting because they're the, the epitopes they recognize do not change in the variants, and they work against all variants. And put a picture of the smallpox hospital in the background. So many people like my office, so I took a picture of it today, and I, I could try inserting it okay. behind. We could just move your pillow. Yes, we could move. I don't know where I'd put it. Should I cover the, uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Should I cover the dot with the pillow? Would that be the thing? Wow, Lee Bollinger said he'd like to see the Columbia crown or lion on the wall behind you. Yeah, well, he's not seeing that. The fact that SARS-CoV-2 attacks endothelial cells implies it's a product of gain of function. Why would you say that at all? Why would you? It makes no sense. No. And it's not a product of gain of function at all. No one made this virus. <laughs> If the two doses were too close together, would a third dose give the effect that we're hoping a more spaced? Well, yes, that's one of the narratives that's being used to justify the third dose, that you now will get the spacing. But Amy doesn't buy that. Right, Amy? No. I think it's a lot of crap to cover up the fact that you marketed these as, as incorrectly and then you compounded it by uh, interpreting the data wrong. And so now you're trying to get your foot out of your mouth, but you're sticking it deeper in. All right. Not me. You're not talking about me, are you? No, I'm just saying in general. All right. I enjoy your textbook despite what I said. I didn't say I didn't like your textbook. No, you just said there were some errors. That's fine. It's no. I'm sure there are. there are. What are you talking about? Like, we know one of your podcast hosts who've written in about error on page 67. and So there are two kind of errors. There are typographical errors and then there are factual errors, right? They're right. Both. So there are a lot of typos. That's fine. There's, there's some factual errors, but not a lot. Otherwise, how could it be a textbook if we're purveying wrong information? Right? Exactly. I mean, um, my field chapter has some technical errors and some typos. Hong Kong has decided to quarantine recovered COVID patients for 14 days, claiming there's a chance of a false negative. That's idiotic. They should just test them again. That's crazy. Right, Amy? It's one of the most insane policies I've heard about lately. 
We talk about a lot of stupid Why things. Why do infectious diseases like COVID have waves? Well, you have a wave because you have a lot of susceptibles. They get infected. Then you exhaust the susceptibles and the numbers go down. But there's still susceptibles out there. And when the virus reaches them, you have another wave. And it's also coupled with human behavior, uh, not not uh, distancing, no masking and so forth, not getting vaccinated. So that's the reason. Right, Amy? Yeah. Okay. If there's, Is there going to be another variant? There will always be variants. They're varying like crazy. And we're sequencing like crazy. But what it means is another story. Um, I, Amy, I would like to know if I decide... Oh, sorry, we did this. She asked you, not me. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. If, if I'm positive and get re, immediately get Regeneron and Molnupiravir, we are waiting a few days, my chances of hospitalization are practically nil. I think that's the plan. That's the plan, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got a lot of repetitions here. Oh, Taylor is lost. I'm so sorry. It's not that complicated, is it? I don't know why he's lost. I don't know what it means. Can't people who do not want to get vaccinated get a quick antigen test and go back to work if they're negative? That's the point of why they're testing anybody, why they've installed a texting policy for people who refuse to get vaccinated. Yeah, I think that's fine if you don't yeah, want to get vaccinated. Yeah, but unfortunately, right? it's only like once a week. What is that going to tell me? It's not enough. You have to do it every day. It needs to and be. And what is this? Talking to Amy is like juggling a cacti? I don't know what it means. I never juggled a cactus. Um, the tension so increases. This has, to be, this has to be every day, this testing, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What tension increases? Actually, when we don't in have any tension. Room? So if you think we're having tension, it's not. It's just we argue like this all the time at work. So Who's it's okay. arguing? <laughs> no problem. Uh, have, do you have any insights about any reproductive toxicity studies for the vaccine? Is it true that lipid nanoparticles have been found in ovaries? Uh, yes, when they loaded mice with huge amounts of nanoparticles, yes, they're found everywhere, actually. So that's not a reflection of what happens normally. So I don't even think that those mice were sterile after they found them in the ovaries. I think yeah. that those mice still reproduced. So I'm still not clear about this. Uh, if uh, Will Ivermectin be a dud or a second coming? It's know. already a dud. What do you mean? <laughs> Well, there's a, you can't have a second coming. It's already had four comings. There's a big trial ongoing, and I suspect we'll know after that because I think so far the trials have been very poor. But Amy may be right. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to have me on TWIV to discuss my work? Well, we already did, didn't we? Right? <laughs> yeah, discussed Amy's it. been on a couple of times once Twice. to discuss her Zika virus work and then EVD68, right? Yeah. But their next batch of work, if when that's published, we should have you on to talk about those and the implications, right? The the antibody studies. Very cool. Yeah. I'm very excited. Maybe they'll even be good. Uh, thank you, H. Zoo, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are running up on the end here. We have 13 minutes left. Dr. Griffin said fluvoxamine could become a standard of practice. Really? Interesting. I must have missed that. Must what have been when I say? was eating cookies. You know, come to the live stream with Daniel tomorrow and ask him that. You can get the answers right from him. Are more students entering virology? Do you know the whether that's true? They're not. <laughs> Excuse me. They're not. Um, at least not at Columbia. Well, we don't have much virology except for you, right? Yeah, a few other but, people. But when do you think COVID will be no longer be a topic of major concern and join the other yearly virus? So, in the public view, probably a couple of years, two and a half years. But scientifically, people will continue to work on it for a long time. For I don't sure. think it's going to last two and a half years. In the public eye? No. You just said that earlier. It was no, I said it's going years. to it's going to be a pandemic for two and a half years. But people have started to lose interest because the minute that the cases start to go down like 
ten percent or whatever. Yeah, it's no longer front page news, right? It's like in the third page of the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Quantum computing is it useful in virology? I don't know exactly. I don't what comp- know what what is quantum computing. Well, it's a. I don't. I'm not going to say because I'll get it wrong. But let me say that AI is useful in virology. So that can be applied to a number of topics to figure out a variety of things. We meant that was mentioned in our little discussion today using yeah. AI to, to do things. wants to use AI. Yeah. Is there any work on a vaccine for RSV? Yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. one in trial. It's one in trial. We talked about it when we did the episode with Alan Dove over on Nova Scotia a couple of years ago. If viral load peaks when symptoms appear, is it reasonable to assume that the fever and the innate immune response it triggers is causing the decline? Does it make sense to treat the fever then? Well, no, I don't think it makes sense to assume that the, the fever and the innate response causes the decline, maybe the innate response to a certain extent. But we do treat fever, as you know, um, but I'm not aware of any negative effects of that. Are you, Amy? No. Do I go to White Castle? No. No, no, no. I don't go to White. I don't even know if there is one around here. What is it? It's a burger joint. A burger joint? Yeah. Can you be more descriptive of a burger joint? Is it a McDonald's quality burger joint or is it like my $40 uh, No, it's not bait? fancy. It's a fast food burger joint. No, but we're not going. We don't go, no. But there aren't any here. Doesn't matter. We're not going. Some researchers from Spain posited that E protein was responsible for virulence. Yeah, I saw that. That was kind of interesting. So it could contribute. It's not the yeah, only thing, it's right? It's not the only thing. Okay. Here we go. That's your difficulty intellectual not versus emotional. Not you. No, no, no. Amy's honesty is refreshing. The comparing of thoughts between two experts also serves as a great example of intellectual versus emotional discussion. I have to say, I agree. I admit, sometimes I get emotional. I blame it on my Italian ancestry. <laughs> Always blame mom. <laughs> no, my father was from Italy, not my mother. She was born here. Any reaction to the Oxford preprint stating vaccination does not appear to protect against long COVID? I don't know. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. That's an interesting preprint. I will have a look at it. I don't know why that would be, right? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Here we go. The ergic is still called a compartment, whether it's a compartment or not. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Amy thinks it's not a compartment. I don't think it's a membrane-bound compartment. Okay. Oh, for you, for, hello from Columbia. Love Amy's watch. You don't have a watch, do you? I oh, do. I have a tank. Her father gave it to her. It's a real tank watch. Amy, why is it called a tank watch? It's called a tank because the band looks like the treads of the tanks from World War, from the so French cool. tanks early in like World War One. So cool. Thank you, Inner Peace, for your contribution. Has optical recognition for plaque counting not materialized? Um, I'm no, sure you could tell. Actually, there is. So, oh. when Julia Sable was at Columbia, she tried to convince me that we should purchase this expensive plaque counting machine with her. Yeah. I did not purchase this expensive plaque counting machine. Amy's the plaque counting machine. Well, actually, your, your folks do it for well, you, right? On weekends, I do it. Joe says influenza B can be eradicated, lack of animal hosts. Actually, that's not true. It was just, I think that Florent Kramer has a paper that discusses whiny eel influenza, spiny, as, spiny yeah. eel, as being an influenza B. We were doing that Friday on TWIV. Yeah, because it's cool. And I also, sent it to you. Uh, influenza cool. B infects seals, apparently. I used to think there's no animal reservoir either, and that's why you don't get pandemics of B. No, I think but it's a wimpy virus. I think it does infect seals, so maybe that's an issue. Yeah. I think C and B are not so virulent compared to A. Although you shouldn't really compare no, C C is not a, terribly virulent. It doesn't cause pneumonia, really. Just upper yeah. tract, yeah. Amy, I read that each dose of Pfizer has 30 micrograms, Moderna 100. Does that mean one shot of Moderna is equal to three shots of Pfizer? No. No, because the spacing in, is important in you know, the boosting and giving you an immune response. 
Thank you, Justin, for your contribution. Plus, I have no idea what micrograms means in moles. <laughs> well, you have to know the molecular weight, right? Then you could convert it. No, Right, but so I don't know what the molecular weight of the RNA is that they're giving. I mean, it could all be the same number of molecules, right? We infected primary bronchial tracheal epithelial cells with SARS-CoV-2. No viruses were detected. Well, that's problematic, right? It should have been, they should have been infected. So I would say something went wrong, right? Yeah. Primary airway cells should be susceptible to infection. That's where the virus is reproducing. Yeah, this isn't the right experiment. All right, let's go through and... Um, oh, here, Joseph is in the virology course, but it's over his head. Uh, prerequisite courses. You know, um, the Khan Academy has some basic biology that you might like, or MIT Open Courseware has some courses that might help. Take a look at those. <laughs> these wide vi <clears throat> these live streams should be required viewing. Well, you know we have 656 people. I think that's darn good for a two-hour live stream. Pretty heavy duty, well, it's hardcore. Not just, right? Yeah, but it's so it's 650 people that can watch it this time. But then when you go and you look, it's 10,000 people who view it every week. That's true. We do get a lot of views post live stream. And so, yeah, I think that... It's more than many twips. It's good. Um, never fails that an RNA virus seminar, someone will ask, is this a quasi-species? Aren't all... Yes, they're all quasi-species. Of course it is. Absolutely. And apparently a lot of people like the side-by-side -side format, but it's not going to happen that often. Sorry. Uh, let's check out the super chats now so we can thank everyone. Why don't they just pull them at the bottom or something? No, they, you have, to, you have to go. Oh, yeah, okay. you have to highlight them. Thank you, Ian, for your contribution. Do you think that many self-reported cases of flu are dubious? Yes, absolutely. If you don't get diagnosed, it could be other viruses causing similar symptoms for sure. Yep, uh, very good point. Apparently, we're Alba and Costello. How could the, how big or small is the risk for long COVID for a vaccinated fifty-year-old? We don't know yet, frankly. I don't um, even know what, in what context. Well, she's afraid if she gets infected. Yeah, but is she vaccinated? Is she non-vaccinated? She said vaccinated fifty-year-old. Oh. Yeah. So we don't know. We the data are still coming in. There was a, there's a preprint that was just mentioned which addresses this, but we have to take a look at it. So I'm not sure yet. Apparently, we are Albert and Costello. Uh, I, I like Abbott and Costello. I, my, I used to watch them as a kid growing up. I, I don't think we're Abbott and Costello, though. Uh, thank you, Russ, for your contribution. Always appreciate it. And let's find the others before we say goodnight. I'm sorry to... Uh, why do people wear a mask with their nose poking out? They... they they don't like the feeling of their nose being covered, but you're right. It's not working because a lot of air comes out in and out of your nose, right? Yeah. What's your opinion on the origin? It's natural, came from uh, some animal in nature, most likely a bat. Where that happened, we don't know, but we'll find out hopefully. A lot of questions tonight. It's really amazing. Really amazing. I'm sorry I can't uh, get through them all. Thank you, Riri Med, for your contribution. Do you think when someone gets a flu shot, general immunity goes up and can help prevent COVID? No. I don't think so. I think only the infectious flu vaccines might do that, right, Amy? It's a long reach. Okay, any other Super Chats contributions to thank here? Wow, look at all those questions. Vanity Nutrition, thank you. Um, I, Vanity is one of our moderators, which means I should be paying you. You shouldn't be paying us, but thank you. Yes, this was a little special treat. I thought you might enjoy it. Next week, we'll be in our usual places, and Amy will have to do a 
a, uh, a a plaque has. A White Tower is a legacy burger joint that sells very small, inexpensive burgers. They used to be inexpensive. Okay, thank you. Never heard of White Tower. I thought it was White Castle. White Castle, yeah. White Castle. White Castle. I don't know. People make statements about virology. They don't, they don't really know what they're talking about. Thank you, Robert, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. All right, we have two minutes left. Can we please look in Africa? Why would you look in Africa for the origin? I don't believe any bats in Africa harbor SARS-CoV-2. Well, the bats in Africa don't harbor these kind of viruses. These kind of viruses, unlike coronaviruses or bats, are very species-specific. So you yes. have to have the right species. And these bats' species are only found in that part of Ch the Far East and then in the Transylvania border and in southern, Europe, in southern Russia. They're not found in other areas. They have other kinds of coronas, a lot of alpha virus coronas. So if you go to Simon's Tuivo, I believe he spent a lot of time discussing this, right? Yes, he did. So just Simon like that, Anthony and yeah. Twiv, check and, that out. No, Tuivo. Tuivo. Okay, got it. Thank you, Riri Med, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. <laughs> this is the best, even though it implies incompetence, it's the best thing. What's There's that? no lab leak possible because virologists have no idea how to make a virus because it's impossible. Seriously, it's not possible for various reasons, but I'll give them credit for it. Okay, let's not make that the last comment here. Transylvania, the orig originated vampire. Okay, here's a good question. Uh, can SARS-2 go retrograde exonal like herpes or rabies? Not that we know of, right? Well, that would imply it infects neurons. Exonal, retrograde exonal trafficking it is, implies it's in neurons and it's not in neurons. Thank you, Margaret, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. And so that brings us to the end of another exciting Q&A with A and V, unique in that we're both here in person. Unique in that I stayed the whole two hours. Amy stayed the whole two hours, folks. It's really a treat for you guys. Thank you for being here. We have 450 likes. That's awesome. 650 Great. people here. That's awesome. And uh, folks, be safe until next week. We'll be back. And if you didn't get your question answered, please come back next week. We'll or be email here. it to Vincent and he'll answer it. So at vincent.microbe.tv. No, vincent at microbe.tv. Yeah. No, but save it for you and me here. That's more fun, right? Cool. Anyway, folks, take care and uh, good night.